Okay, we're given the graph of a line, and it shows a rectangular sum of eight rectangles that are being used to approximate the area between the curve, this line, and the x-axis, or the area under the graph between 0 and 4. So we've got some questions about this. The first one is, is it a left-hand sum or a right-hand sum? So in this case, because the graph is on the left-hand side, and basically we're drawing these rectangles up to the graph, they're touching on the left-hand side and then drawing them over, we call this a left-hand sum. Now if the uh, rectangles were drawn up from the right-hand side and then touch the graph, and then kind of carry over to the left-hand side, that would be a right-hand sum. Next up, what about the equation of this line? Well, we're given the equation, we're going to need y equals mx plus b. Pretty straightforward equation for a line where b is the y-intercept. Okay, y-intercept of this line shouldn't be tough to figure out. B is going to be 0, right, where we cross the x, uh, y axis. Also happens to be where we cross the x axis. The other component is our slope, m for this line. Because we're given a graph, I like to visualize this as rise over run. Now zooming in here, if I start at the origin, that point that I already have there, I think about how many units do I go up and over. Let's say to get to this next point over here. I would be going up two units and to the right one unit. So my rise component, because it's going up, is going to be a positive two. My run component, because I go to the right, is going to be a positive one. So the slope of our line is going to be two over one makes two. Putting these two pieces of information together, the equation is going to be y equals, instead of m, we'll have 2, x plus 0, or even more simplified, y equals 2x. Now probably the most challenging of all these questions we're going to answer on this one is, what's the value of the sum? So let me get rid of these markings that I already have here, and let's zoom in and think about this. They told us we had a bunch of rectangles to deal with. All right, the first one actually starts at the origin, is drawn over here, it doesn't have any height to it. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to utilize areas of rectangles, is just length times width, their base times height, however you like to visualize that. Well, each one of these rectangles is going to be a consistent width of one half. So that first one would be one half times zero for its height. Plus the next one goes up one unit and has one half for its base. So one half times one. Plus the next one goes up two units and has one half for its base here. So one half times two. Plus, you'll notice this continues. This one's three units tall, one half wide. And we can continue this. What's that highest one going to be? All right, this is going to go all the way up until we get one that's seven units high. So I'm going to write it all out, but I'm going to do it quickly. All right, it's going to go to four next, then five, then six. And we said we were going to finish at 7. So all I've done there is I've done one half, this consistent width for every one of these rectangles, multiplied by each one of these different heights the whole way through. And then we add them all together because we're trying to find the total sum of all of these rectangular areas. Well, to simplify this a little bit more, I notice that every one of these has a one half being multiplied. We can say that's a common factor, and I'm going to bring it out in front. All right, so if I take a one-half out from each one of these, we're going to have 0 plus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, inside a big set of parentheses, which works out to be one-half times 28, which will be 14 is their combined areas, the sum, sum of their areas for all those rectangles. All right, so hopefully that made sense. I know I went through it pretty quickly. Um, but remember, as you're calculating the areas of these rectangles, it really is base times height, or length times width, however you want to think about calculating areas of rectangles. And it's really nice when each one of their widths are the exact same um, the whole way through. Makes life a little bit easier. All right, I hope this helps. Good luck.